Here's an example using probability. Suppose we take 100, 100 velocity measurements in a wind tunnel. We calculate the sample mean, sample standard deviation, and we assume that all the errors in the reading are pure random, purely random. This enables us to use the Gaussian or normal PDF in these calculations. Now, part A, let's calculate the probability that the velocity of some random measurement in this sample is in the range given. In other words, we want to calculate this probability. So what we'll do is we'll calculate Z1, which is defined as V1 minus mu over sigma, where in our case, instead of V, let's use X to be consistent with our notation. So we'll approximate this. Since we don't know mu and sigma, the population mean and population standard deviation, we'll approximate these as the mean, sample mean, and the sample standard deviation. And so Z1, uh, since the mean and Z and X1 are the same, Z1 is 0. And Z2, similarly, is X2 minus X bar over S. And that's equal to 5.200, the second value, minus the mean, 5.126 over standard deviation 0 0.0690 and this gives us 1.072. Now here's the key to solving these kind of problems. I like to draw a figure so that we know exactly what we're dealing with, which area under the curve that we're concerned about. So here's our f of v or f of x. You could use v or x here. It's actually velocity. Um, our PDF in real life, real variables looks like this. And the mean is here. This I'll call x bar. And then x1 is actually equal to x bar. And x2 is somewhere over here. And the area that we're interested in is this area. This is the probability that x1 is less than x is less than or equal to x2. Now when we transform this to the z, f of z, since we were told that the errors are purely random, we assume that this transforms into a standard bell curve, Gaussian or normal PDF. So f of z versus z will look like this, where our mean is now 0. And this turns out to be our z1, z1 is 0, and z2 is what we calculated up here is 1.072. And the area that we're interested in is this area here, and this area is the probability that z1 is less than z is less than or equal to z2, and that is the same area as we are interested in. Now it turns out that this area is also called A of Z in our notation. So we simply need to look up A of Z in our table. So at Z2 equal 1.072, we look at the PDF table for the normal distribution, which I have up here. A of Z is actually defined as that area from 0 to Z. Our Z is 1.072. 0.072, so here's 1.0, we go over to the 7, so 1.072 is in between these two values. We interpolate, I just use linear interpolation, and we get a value that is equal to 0.3581, so A of Z equals 0 0.3581, and so finally the probability is equal to 35.8%. Part B of this problem asks us to calculate the probability that the velocity of some random measurement is in a different range, 5 to 5.2. And so we approach this in a similar manner. First we calculate Z1. Z1 is X1 minus X bar over S. And we plug in the numbers, we get negative 1.826. Z2 is x2 minus x bar over s. 
and we get 1.072, same as the previous problem actually, which was 1.072. And so from that problem, from A, A of Z2 uh, was already calculated as 0 0.3581. And we have to calculate A of Z1. Well, we know that A of Z1 is A of negative Z1, since the Gaussian is symmetric. And at 1.826, notice when we go to our Gaussian table, we scroll down. Notice that these are all values for positive Z only. The negative Z values are the same areas because it's symmetric. So we go down to 1.826. 826, so that would be this row in between these two values, and we get 0 0.4661 when we interpolate. And so again, it's good to draw uh, a diagram so that we know which areas we're interested in. Here's our original f of x versus x original curve. We are interested in velocities between V1, or we'll call it X, X1, and X2. So we're interested, here's the mean, we're interested in this area. When we transform to F of Z, again it's random errors, so this is the Gaussian that we're interested in. And now our Z1 is here, and our Z2 is here, and the area we want is the area inside, which as I stated before is the same as this area. So these areas are equal. Now in this problem we must recognize that this is A of Z1, and this area is A of Z2. So the probability that Z lies between Z1 and Z2 is the same as the probability that X lies between X1 and X2. And so finally we can conclude that we have to add those areas. So the probability that V1 is less than V is less than or equal to V2 for those given two given velocities equals A of Z1 plus A of Z2. And we plug in 0.4661 that we had calculated plus 0.3581 and we get 0 0.8242 or final answer to three significant digits 82.4 percent.